All right, it is time to switch things up a little bit. Nowadays, I rarely have the time to sit down and enjoy a good book, so that's what we're gonna do today. This will basically be like a book club in video form, so if you guys want to pick up these books and follow along, that would be great. So the first book that I decided we should take a look at together is Syndicate by Agency, a very popular book. I definitely recommend checking it out. And if you are familiar with it, you will know that if you open up to page one, Oh wait, it's Sunday Gunday, isn't it? Yep. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are taking a look at a new kit from Agency Arms. Now a kit from Agency, they're basically known for a lot of their custom work that they do to firearms, mainly Glocks, so what could they possibly sell in a kit? What they've put together here is actually coming from a new sub-brand of Agency known as Syndicate. For starters, let's appreciate this packaging a little bit. It's not every day that a brand takes pride in how they actually ship and showcase their work, so the whole kit coming in a leather-ish bound book is really unique. And yes, my apartment does smell of rich mahogany, thank you for asking. So what actually comes in this kit? When you open it up, you'll get your first look at a beautiful complete slide with all of the necessary parts, including a syndicate barrel installed, as well as a hand stippled polymer 80 frame. These parts feature the same quality and engineering that you'd expect from Agency, but since Syndicate is their new brand, this was put together to be much more cost effective. Also, notice how I said that it is a P80 frame. I won't get into all of the details regarding this, but because this is an unfinished, unserialized chunk of plastic, this kit can actually be shipped straight to your door. Now the fun doesn't stop on top. If you check underneath, you will also find everything else that you need to get the syndicate up and running. The P80 jig and a complete lower parts kit, so all you really need is a mag. Now if you've put together a P80 before, this is actually the first Polymer 80 build that I've ever done, you will know the struggle of not only deciding on which parts to use, but sourcing them as well. As of now, there are two options to choose from when picking up a Syndicate kit. You can go with the S1, which uses a slide that has front serrations and window cuts both on the sides and the top. Or you can go with the S2, which I decided to build out, and this one comes with a slide using some really nice knurling in both the front and the rear. Other than the slide that comes with the S1 and S2 kit, everything else is exactly the same. Now, since I had the option to pick between the S1 and the S2, I obviously chose to build this out, and I don't want to be greedy by keeping both of them, so I've actually teamed up with Shooting Surplus to give this one away to one of you guys, so stay tuned until the end to find out how to win this. Now because of the rules here on YouTube, I can't actually show you how this thing went from a chunk of polymer and a bunch of metal pieces into its finished state now. So let's just jump right in and take a look at the finished product. Starting from the top down, this kit comes with serrated blacked out iron sights. Not my favorite choice, but they aren't plastic and they are cost effective, so I'll take it. The knurling in both the front and rear is awesome in my opinion, and it's a nice break from the same old serrations that you tend to find nowadays. The slide also features their AOS, or Agency Optic System, which gives you the option to buy a variety of adapter plates for whichever optic that you want to run. Moving down to the frame, you will find all of the benefits that a P80 gives you over a stock lock frame, like the 1911 style grip angle and the undercut trigger guard. The whole thing is stippled by Agency, and their work is definitely towards the top when compared to some of the competition. The lower parts kit is fairly standard, like a normal Glock 19, but they do also include a new Syndicate brand trigger, which is very reminiscent of the Agency triggers, but this one's polymer. So this kit looks great and all, but Talon, how much does it cost? Both the S1 and S2 kits are shipping from Shooting Surplus right now for $1,200, or $1,140 if you use code TALENTSI at checkout. But for real though, thank you to Shooting Surplus for sponsoring this video. So about $1,200 or maybe a little bit less for a book full of parts that looks just like this. It ships straight to your door and with a little know-how and some elbow grease, it can yield something like this. Is it worth it? Let's go to the range footage and find out for ourselves. All right guys, we're out here in the snow today for the first couple of shots through the Syndicate. I just put this build together, obviously I could not show you guys all of that, and I'm at the point right now where I've racked this thing probably close to a thousand times. As long as I am completely letting the slide go all the way back, as you can see, it's going back into battery every time. I do not need to nudge it. Even if I'm holding it up in the air like this, 
still seems to be going back okay. And now if I feel the trigger reset, as long as I let it go pretty quickly, it seems to go back into battery without an issue, so hopefully when I put some rounds through it, it will function flawlessly. Out of all of the Polymer 80 builds that I've done so far, I've never actually worked in a slide and new frame as much as I have this one. Other times I have had some malfunctions with the slide obviously not going back into battery because everything is still very tight since it is new. So for the first mag impression, I'm going to start with a 33 round magazine. I'm going to try to put all of these rounds down. That way it'll kind of give this thing a chance to loosen up. I did over oil this thing. I definitely put way more oil in here than I typically would with a new gun. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's see if it runs. <laughs> My hands are cold. Chamber it around just fine. All right, there we had one either not go into battery or it did not eject all the way. Just looks like got a little hung up. Not a huge issue, that typically happens, like I said. Let's see if it can run the rest of this mag. Ooh, there we had a stove pipe. There again, failure to feed. All right, couple malfunctions on the first mag, but we'll kind of take a look at this thing and then hopefully run some more through it and it'll smooth out a little bit. All right guys, back for my first mag impression with this new Syndicate build. As you saw there, I only had two malfunctions out of 33 rounds, and if you've ever dealt with building and shooting a brand new Polymer 80 before, that's not too bad. For reference, the first Polymer 80 build that I did right here, this thing was malfunctioning left and right, right from the start. I really wasn't aware of how much you had to actually work this slide in until it would function like it normally should. Now, this build probably has close to 750 rounds through it, and as you can see, this thing functions and feels just like a normal Glock that you would buy from a store. The more you shoot these things, the better they will get over time, so I knew that going into this build. And before shooting this thing for the first time, I literally sat back here at my desk just racking this slide over and over and over again. Like I sort of explained before shooting there, I was doing the test of holding the gun upwards and then letting the slide go. A lot of people will tell you different things, but from my experience when building a bunch of these, I've probably built like three or four of them now. Once everything is together, as long as I can take the slide, rack it like normally, and it goes back into battery every time, I'm okay with that. You do also want to check the reset on the trigger because obviously you are moving the internals around in here, so I'll pull the trigger, feel the reset, and again, as long as that slide is going back into battery every time, I'm okay with shooting that. Right from the start, when these things are new, you're obviously going to run into a bunch of malfunctions like you saw, and you will see more throughout this video, but basically, I'm just going to be tackling this review from the Syndicate kit. What do I think about this new kit, this sub-brand from Agency, and do I think that it is actually worth it? So if this video is too long for you, you don't want to wait till the end. Is this thing worth it in my opinion? Yes, I've already shot this gun. I put a bunch of rounds through it. And overall, my opinion is yes, it is worth that $1,200 price tag. Now, if you want to hear my reasoning behind that, stick around and we will get into it right now. Starting from the top down after my first mag impression, the sights, not a huge fan of them. I do like that they are metal, so that is definitely an improvement over stock lock sights. I do also like that they are serrated, so that definitely cuts down on the glare. These lights that I'm sitting in front of are blaringly bright, and as you can see, there is no glare or reflection coming off of that rear sight like you can see on the back plate here. 
Also, shout out to my friend Mike who sent me out this back plate that obviously does not come with the Syndicate kit, but it looks pretty cool. So those are the things that I do like about the sights, and the things that I don't like is that they are just plain and black. I much prefer something with either fiber optics or tritium, or at least just painted dots on there. Everything that I'm going to be saying in this video is obviously personal preference, but I think a lot of people would agree on that. The first thing that anyone is going to change on basically any handgun are the sights, so that is not a huge deal to me. Now moving down to the slide, first of all, the coating on here is great. This is definitely something that you would expect from Agency Arms. I actually have my my first ever Gucci build right here and this slide was actually done by them. After a few years now and shooting the hell out of this thing, it definitely is holding up pretty damn well. The coatings are very similar and maybe it's because this is new, probably some type of newer technology than when they put this slide together. But I'm definitely a big fan of this finish and it does not stop there. The knurling, like I said, these front serrations that you see on basically every gun nowadays, it's kind of getting boring. So when I had the option to choose between the two, I opted for the S2 kit, which comes with that knurled slide. When you're in an ideal environment, like right now, it's pretty warm in here. My hands are not cold, wet, bloody, muddy, or anything like that. This knurling feels great on the hands. You can definitely get a nice firm purchase on there in both the front and the rear. If you get in close here, you can see the very nice attention to detail. There is no milling marks that some companies are definitely guilty of leaving on guns like this especially when you're making passes like this line right here in both the front and the rear. They also added that subtle Syndicate logo on each side there. And although this is a newer, more cost-effective brand coming from Agency, you can definitely expect that same Agency quality. This does have their AOS system like I mentioned. Unfortunately, I do not have any of their plates and I probably would not run a red dot on top of this. But one cool thing about this system is that it is just three screws here. You can pop this plate off and that rear sight goes along with you. I see some people that like to run their rear sights in front of an RMR or any other red dot for that matter. I've shot both and I typically prefer it to be in the rear so that's definitely a big plus for me. I really don't have any hands-on experience with this system and swapping out the plates but I think that it would function pretty damn well. And then of course there is the barrel with some very similar coating. The front of the muzzle there is also beveled giving you a little bit of protection if you are bumping this thing into anything. Now this barrel did clean up very easily so I think it's going to have some great wear protection. Again it is marked with their syndicate branded logo on there and 9x19 on the top. The lockup on this thing feels great. I really don't feel any wiggle room and if I had to guess I would say that these things come hand fit at least to some extent because like I said when this slide comes to you in the kit it comes completely assembled with the firing pin, all of the springs, the extractor, the barrel, and the recoil spring all installed. So far so good and now we are going to move down to this frame. Now a polymer 80 frame versus a Glock frame, which for the most part is going to come serialized. I'm really not going to get into this whole thing. If you know, you know. If not, do a little research on the difference between the two. I really do like the idea of polymer 80s and what they offer you, like you can have this kit shipped straight to your door. But I'm basically going to be looking at this review just from the functionality of the frames. So first up, you got the rail up here. Lots of slots there to mount up whatever you need. Definitely a plus. The undercut trigger guard, that comes from P80 just like that. Another big plus. You will spend lots of money sending out a stock Glock frame to get that same undercut done. So in this kit, it obviously comes like that. Then you have the grip angle of a polymer 80 when compared to a stock Glock. This thing feels way more like a 1911. For me, the grip angle is much more natural. When I push out onto target, I don't find that I have to really tilt my wrist forward at all. If you've handled both of them and tried to get a sight picture nice and fast, you will probably know which one will work best for you. I do like the beaver tail and overall I like the way that polymer 80s fill up my hand. They are a little bit bigger than a stock Glock grip like this. Especially if you're not running one of their larger grips. Lately I've actually been using the medium grip with the beaver tail a lot more. So this thing does come with a little bit of a beaver tail and this is actually one of the first guns that I was experiencing slide bite. You can still see on my hand here. This thing was biting me a little bit and typically that doesn't happen but it could have just been because I was trying to get a higher purchase that day. Then of course this polymer 80 does come stippled. Here is a stock polymer 80 frame and the texturing that they put on here. And then comparing it to the hand laid agency texture, I'm not exactly sure which one I prefer more. 
As of right now, the agency handwork definitely feels a lot grippier. But then again, I've had this gun for a while and I've had my hands on it a lot more. So I think the more that I shoot this thing, the faster that this grip will wear down as opposed to the stock grip. That is obviously nothing that I can really comment on right now because I need to shoot these things more long term before I give my opinion on that. But it does feel really good. They even textured up here for the shooter ledge. And then underneath here where your support hand rides, they even have the texturing right there. So that's definitely a nice touch. These polymer 80s are set up to accept any Gen 3 Glock part, so the whole lower parts kit, like I said, is pretty much the same that you would get on a stock Glock. And then of course you do have that Syndicate branded trigger, which we will get to in a little bit. So overall, so far from a first mag perspective, there's definitely some good value here, but let's head back to the range footage, shoot it a little bit more, and then I will come back with some more complete final thoughts. All right, so I have not oiled this or anything. I just took it apart to check out the internals. Everything seems fine. There are a little bit of wear marks that are becoming apparent now, but once I keep shooting this thing, hopefully it will wear in even more. Let's see how this Polymer 80 feels with some gloves on. Got through a 15 round mag that time. Another mag, no issues now. It seems to be breaking in a little bit but I just realized that I probably should have painted my targets a color other than white, whatever. Well, my cousin's up here today, so he's gonna put some rounds through it for us. to feed. That little guy, I won't worry about that little guy. <laughs> so wait, 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 what do you think about the sights? Because they're just black on black. I actually don't really like the sights. There's too much gap between your back post and your front post. I like when that front post fills up those back sights perfect. What do you think about the Polymer 80 grip angle compared to a normal Glock? Does it point more naturally for you? It does. I mean, with the Glock, everyone knows you gotta roll your hand slightly forward. This one, you can kind of come up and be right on target. It is nice. The undercut trigger guard? Yeah. So you can get way underneath there, get your hand up on it. Definitely like the texture work they put on it. Super nice. grippy, even the slide. Like we were talking about earlier in the cold, that's rough on your hands, that's nice. This thing still needs some work, break it in, but we're getting there. But very nice gun so far. All right, back to no gloves so I can get a better feel of the frame, the actual texturing, and then the knurling on the slide. I'm missing a lot. Another stove pipe. Go for another mag too. 17 rounds this time. No pipe. So I definitely hear what you're saying about the sights. I too prefer the front sight post to take up more of that rear notch, but with a little bit of getting used to, I think it'll be all right. Again, polymer 80s aren't something that I shoot a whole lot. I am starting to like it, and especially appreciating the whole package for what it really is. 
So if anything is going to break this in, obviously shooting more rounds through it is. So how about a KCI USA mag, 50 round drum. I'm not sure if this is going to affect the reliability of the gun. You already see kind of what it's doing with the failure to feeds or failure to ejects. Hopefully this thing works. I've ran it in a pistol caliber carbine before. So let's see how this does. It just looks so ridiculous. Oh man, why is that so tight? I'm gonna lock the slide back. Then insert the mag. It feels weird with the recoil impulse because there's so much weight down here, it kind of like brings you back on the target. And that is with this thing completely full. That ran all 50 without an issue, so the mag seems to be good, and 50 rounds through it pretty quick are obviously making this thing break in a little bit better too. The slide's actually starting to feel a lot smoother already, and we put maybe 100 rounds down, so let's do a couple more mags, and then we'll finish up with the final impressions. So now we're standing at 10 yards and we're gonna do the step back game. So you take a shot, if you miss, you go to your strong hand, if you miss, you go to your support hand, and then if you miss, you're out. Copy. So we have about 30 rounds, and then we're just gonna shoot them all until we're out. No pressure. No pressure. Boom. 10 yards. I'm like taking my time to make sure I win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is 20. Don't mess up. Oh! oh! Go to strong hand. <laughs> You're also shooting with gloves, you know? Ooh, still in it. <laughs> Hopefully I don't miss on the first shot like that. Back to 30. 30 yards. Woo! Strong hand, you missed. Oh, I missed? Yeah. I felt like I hit. No. That was super low. I forced that one. <laughs> You're out, unless I miss. I suck today. It's not the best shooting conditions, but it's not always gonna be ideal when you need to use your gun. This is horse <laughs> I'm going back to 40 now. All right, 40 yards. Ooh, I should have took my time a little bit more on that one. Shit, that was, <laughs> was it? Yeah. Damn, oh, I'm shaky, it's cold. I'm shaking so much. It's time for a mag dump. I'm gonna use the KCI 50 round drum and hopefully it runs them all. Failure to feed. Failure to eject. Alright guys, back for my final thoughts on the Syndicate S2. As you can see there, we were definitely struggling with the whole seeing the targets thing. I had them spray painted white, which I typically do, but I was shooting in the snow, which I typically do not do. So future note to self, get orange spray paint or literally any other color. 
So because it was a little hard to see that day, I definitely struggled with accuracy just a little bit in the beginning there. But towards the end there, I was definitely getting to warm up to it a little bit more. The front sight post when positioned in the rear definitely does get a little bit swimmy. There is some room to move it around in there and kind of bounce it from left to right. I definitely prefer sights where the front sight post takes up the entire rear. But again, that is all just personal preference and these sights can be changed very easily. So if I wanted to run this gun a little bit more and a little bit better, I would probably opt for something like True Glow TFOs or TFXs. Those are some of my favorite sights right now, but again, that is all subjective. Now, when we were out there in the cold, my hands were obviously freezing, and that made the texture, the knurling on here, feel way more aggressive than it actually is. That obviously doesn't change anything. You can still get a very nice grip on there in both the front and the rear. It's not overly aggressive or sharp in any way, but when your hands are numb, this feels like, like nothing else I've ever felt before. The knurling is definitely very functional and at the same time I think it's pretty aesthetically pleasing as well. Now let's move down to this Syndicate branded trigger. Like I said, this is very reminiscent of the Agency trigger, which I do have in this build. We'll take a look at this one first. This is just one of their drop-in triggers. They also give you the option to hand fit these if you do send a gun into them. As you can see here, this is branded with their Agency logo, has a nice flat face profile safety in the middle there. And then if you compare this right next to the Syndicate trigger, basically looks exactly the same, but with a different logo, and this one is of course polymer. So that is giving you a very similar feel, but this one is coming in at a drastically lower price point. Now, how does this thing feel? I'll get that safety out of the way and start to take the slack out. I get to a little bit of a wall right here, so if I pull through that, there is a little bit of creep before I get to the break. We'll feel the reset quick. Very tactile and audible, much like you would expect on a Glock. And then I'm right on top of that wall again. Little bit of creep. And then a break. Now because this gun only has like maybe 200 to 250 rounds through it, the thing still definitely needs to break in. You saw a bunch of malfunctions there. That is just the nature of Polymer 80. I'm not going to knock it for that. I know for a fact that once I break this thing in, it's going to be just as reliable as this one is. And this is almost just as reliable as a regular old Glock that you buy from a store. If I ever do go out and shoot my original Polymer 80 build anymore and there are any malfunctions, then I know something is up with either the ammo or maybe I messed something up internally with the gun. This is at the point now where I do consider this gun to be very reliable and if anything with that changes I will definitely let you guys know in a future video. The Syndicate however is still breaking in with both the slide and the trigger as well. This drop in trigger was dropped right into a stock Glock. It's basically stock Glock internals as well. It really just changes the shoe and the front safety there. This thing obviously feels much better because this gun has probably like 1200 rounds through it already. So again once I shoot this thing more and it breaks in it will hopefully become more reliable and I think this trigger will start to feel more like that agency drop in. The plasticiness of the trigger really doesn't bother me. It still feels very solid. I would of course prefer a metal shoe like on the Agency, but Syndicate is their newer brand to be more cost effective. This is obviously saving them a bunch of money as opposed to throwing a metal trigger in this package. And that is what keeps this cost down low at about $1,200. So let's start to wrap this up now. Do I think the Syndicate is worth it? Like I said in the beginning of the video, yes. If you like the idea of Polymer 80s and everything that they really stand for, if you like the really nice quality and engineering that goes into Agency Arms products like their slides and barrels, if you like metal sights and the option to put a RMR plate on here, if you like flat face triggers and you don't like shopping around to find all of these parts mismatched and everything that really goes into something like this, then yes, I definitely think that that price point is justified. It's really cool that they are doing this and I'm actually surprised that no other companies started doing this sooner because it just makes sense to me. Now, is something like this going to be for everyone? Definitely not. There is more of a headache that goes into something like this than going out and just buying a stock Glock 19 and then doing all this stuff to it. That gun then is of course serialized and then you have to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to get all of the nice slide cuts and an upgraded trigger, sights, barrel, and anything else that might go into that build. So this is just a one-stop shop that comes right to your door. Really nice slide, some great stipple work on a frame from a reputable company. Reputable. 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 
Okay, yeah, reputable. You ever just say a word and then it's like, wait, did I just make that up completely? So in conclusion, the package is great. I definitely think it's something that might be up a lot of people's alley, especially if you want to get into the custom handgun game. Polymer 80s are pretty sweet if you know how to set them up and the work that goes into them. So if you guys want to check out these kits, of course, I would appreciate it if you went over and checked out shootingsurplus.com. I gotta give a big thank you again to them for sponsoring this video and sending these out to me. I also wasn't joking about that discount code. If you use code TALENTSI at checkout, you can pick these things up for about $60 off or anything else that they offer on their site. As of right now, TALENTSI is good for a 5% discount on anything that they sell. So now you wanna know about the giveaway. I am giving away this S1 package in conjunction with Shooting Surplus. What do you gotta do to win this syndicate of your own? It's actually very simple. They have set up a Gleam giveaway and I will leave a link for that in the description down below. A couple of the things that you want to note, of course, you should be 21 and legally able to own a firearm. You, of course, have to live in the United States, so sorry to anyone who is watching from anywhere else in the world. And then all of the info and other things that you can do to better your chance of winning will be found in that link, so go check it out. And again, a huge thank you to Shooting Surplus for setting this whole thing up. Now, if you guys have any questions on the Syndicate builds, the different kits that they offer, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. And if you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.